What's up guys? One thing I can tell you about a sales wolf is they are efficient. And that is why you're seeing this video right now in the car. I wanted to give you guys a quick explanation of what to expect in this episode of the Sales Wolves podcast. We're going to give you a, a recap, kind of a mashup of all of the last episodes all into one so that you can kind of see where we've come from, where we are now, and ultimately where we're headed. So I hope you enjoy this episode. It's a little different one, but I think it'll bring you a lot of value. Talk to you soon. To the Sales Wolves Podcast. My name is Joseph Caldwell, and here is my co-host uh, Tyler Harris, and we are the Sales Wolves. Hi. So, what is a sales wolf? Uh, you know, I'll give you my definition first. I think a sales wolf is the most highly competitive. A sales wolf will do anything it takes to get the sale. Uh, to, to, to meet the goal, to exceed the expectations. That doesn't stop when they've won, that, that stops when, they're, when, when there's Don't. nothing left. <laughs> we are of the opinion that everyone is a salesperson. You're either selling yourself to someone or selling yourself to do something every single second of every single day. Um, yep. And we know it's a lonely road, so you guys need support and appreciation. We're still out there selling. We know what it's like, and uh, it's not easy. If you don't think you're in sales, then that's the number one hurdle you have to get over because mm -hmm. we believe everybody is in sales. Mm -hmm. If you're a stay-at-home mama, you're in sales, right? Somebody's got to sell that kid on eating that broccoli, mm -hmm. right? Um, if you are a lawyer, a doctor, an engineer, you have to use you have to use sales every day to get your job done effectively, right? We just want people that are sales wolves, that are wolves, to understand themselves. Yeah. And and then we also want people that are giraffes or mm -hmm. or hippos mm -hmm. or any other of the bears or yeah. lions so we're or tigers. Our podcast. <laughs> Sales hippos is next. Sales hippos. No. <laughs> but, but we want people to be self-aware. That's the best <laughs> definition, basically, what he just said of self-awareness. Self it's not about, when you, when you really discover who you are, it's not about one person being better than the other. It's about celebrating who you are, celebrating your strengths, celebrating the things that make you you, not mm -hmm. focusing on the weaknesses, focusing on yeah. the things that you lack. If people spend the amount of time that they spend on worrying and complaining about the things that they're not good at, if they took that energy and used it on what they're good at, oh my they would be a completely different scenario. If you just double down on what you're good at. The majority of people struggle, and this is huge, the majority of people struggle in this area, and here's why. They major in minor things. Yep. That's one of the smartest things I've ever heard. They major in minor things, and they spend not enough time on the things that are actually important. Yep. They spend all their time on the things that that really don't matter. Mm -hmm. So the starting point is understanding the truth of where you're at. Right. But that's not where that's not the who statement. You are. It's not where the statement ends. And that's not who you are. And it's not where your life ends. Yeah. Right. So so those things, those things you did, those things that happen, those don't define who you are. Those are just yeah. things that happen. Only when I started loving myself, forgiving myself, was I actually able to love Tyler, to love Steven Spielberg over here. To love, <laughs> to love, to love J Jason. To love people around me, mm -hmm. right? Because when you when when you love yourself, you're then able to love your neighbor, mm -hmm. and 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 it's a real key is to stop being self loathing. So the fastest way to find your talents are to go try anything and everything that you're interested in, and you'll figure it out. And the faster you can go and try new things, explore new things, do things you've never done before the quicker you're gonna find something that, number one, that you're good at, but number two, that you actually enjoy. Don't we, at the end of the day, have to look in the mirror, and when you come to the point where you can absolutely look in the mirror and go, hey, it's your fault for everywhere you are in your life right now, good or bad. Good or bad, it's your fault. This is a challenge that I put out to you. To start auditing your day. Choose a day and say, okay, every 30 minutes, I'm going to set a timer on my phone. And every 30 minutes, I'm just going to kind of jot down, whether it's in the notes on your iPhone or whether you actually jot it down on a piece of paper. But every 30 minutes, set an alarm. 
to remind yourself to jot down, what did I do over the last half hour? What did I get done over the last half hour? I think you'll be shocked at just the sheer time wasted throughout a day. I was working on my attitude about money and my relationship with money and that it was a river flowing to me mm -hmm. and it didn't stop with me. It, it, I, I wanted the gratefulness put you in a position to turn around and you direct those things to people that you can help and and so it's a it's a it's a cycle. Yeah. The pain of falling short is nothing compared to the shame of stopping short. It's those tiny little moments, uh, we call those defining moments uh, around here, that when you're faced with the opportunity to do something or not do something, to do the right thing or not do the right thing, and by right thing I mean like doing something active for 10 minutes versus laying in bed for an extra 10 minutes, when you choose the right thing, even if it's tiny, even if it's small, that's what creates and maintains that momentum is the constant choice of doing the right thing even when it's not easy. And let me tell you what practice does. Practice gives you that confidence again, that boldness again. If you, if you practice a phone script or a, or a presentation script or, or any type of script over and over with somebody until it is just second nature, you literally are bulletproof. They smell it on you. You will get the meeting. And somebody else may have to say the same words and they won't get the meeting. They won't make the sale. They're saying the same words, but you've practiced and you say the same words you sell it. Because that's really what every obstacle is, is it's an, it's an opportunity that should be embraced as such. So that you know, hey, something's going on right now, this is difficult, this is a, this is a struggle to get through this, how can I grow through this? Whatever your goal is, when you, when you look at 2019 and you set a physical goal with your health and body, whether you set a goal with your relationships, um, and, and, and how you interact with those, whether you set a goal with your personal growth um, or, or money-wise, yeah. right? Whatever the goal is, you, you need to set short bursts of attaining those, mm -hmm. and you need to figure out like 90-day short burst, and then you need to figure out what you have to become to walk into that goal. Because it's lonely, man. Sales is a lonely deal most of the time. When mm -hmm. you're out there, you're on the road, or you're, you, you know, it, you're typically not going to an appointment with somebody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this is it's a it's a lonely, you get rejection. Anytime you've got rejection and loneliness, that's a hard deal. Mm -hmm. That's why people most people don't make it in sales. With those two factors. It's so so important to have a kind of customer customer first focus. I will have. I have the, it's human nature to look for the magic pill somewhere. It's human nature to look for the, the networking event, the chamber event, the easy, whatever your easy is, that's where you go. You go and you try to fix it with your easy. When legitimately, um, if you just realize you can, if you're gonna sell something, you got the phone, yep. you send phone, you, 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 you can send phone, <laughs> you can make phone calls, you can walk through the door places. However you get in touch with people, you do that and you do it tons and tons and tons and tons of time. You do not let your fingers rest, your ear rest, your mouth rest until you have the, you get in front of people and you talk about what it is you're selling. What I, what I realized as my life got more comfortable is that, is that I became a comfort seeker. Hmm. Okay, and, and, and what I realized is as I, as I sought comfort, life delivered pain. Hmm. And I went, if that's true, then the opposite must be true. So if I seek pain, I seek discomfort, then life will continue to deliver pleasure. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Harris. And Joseph Caldwell. We are the Sales Wolves. Ow!